My brothers and sisters, our goal on this sacrifice Sunday, as I stated in that email that I sent to the church, is that our goal is that we will raise $20,000 today. Mm -hmm. Someone may say, well, that's impossible. But you don't know what the person sitting next to you is. That's right. And I haven't lived as long as most of you. But one thing is for sure, I have an unwavering faith in God. And I'm trusting God that God will do that which only God can do. This whole ministry is a miracle. You can call it what you want to call it. But the things that we've been able to do is only been by the grace of God. If you look at the numbers that have been here, statistics say that it shouldn't happen. But how many of you that God has a map that supersedes human kind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so when we bring our offerings, we have these sacrificial envelopes. And I've asked Brother McAfee and Brother Kevin Lewis, the chairs of the trustee and Stuart Board, respectfully, to lead this campaign effort. So one of them will hold a basket for our sacrificial offering. And then finally I ask, if you will, please take some of these campaign cards with you after service and share it with others. The choir will come and then I will come back with today's sermon. And then we will be dismissed. And you can go and fire up your grills. Amen. God bless you.
the day. But I'm still holding on. How many of you still holding on? It gets rough sometimes. But you gotta hold on. It gets hard sometimes. But you gotta hold on. You can walk out of your life. But you gotta hold on. When folks walk out of your life, you gotta hold on to God. Hold on. That's my testimony. The book of Romans, the 12th chapter, the first verse. Mm -hmm. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then Eugene Peterson in the Message Bible puts it this way. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life. And place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And I want to preach from this subject for a few moments this morning. What about your sacrifice? What about your sacrifice? We make sacrifices often in our lives, even when we don't think about it. Sacrifices are around us from the cradle to the grave. Think about it for a moment. A woman makes a sacrifice when she chooses to bring a child into this world often putting her well-being in jeopardy. We make sacrifices to send our children to college. We make sacrifices to co-sign for a car for our children or loved ones. We make sacrifices when we choose to marry someone, mm -hmm. neglecting ourselves to become husband and wife while forsaking all others. Yeah. We make sacrifices to purchase homes. We make sacrifices in many aspects of our lives, but often except for God. Yeah. When we think about it, when we think about God, we often think about burdens. Why does the church need me to do this? And why does the church need, need me to do that? But the reality is, the church doesn't need you to do anything. But requires, but God requires us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice yes. to Him. Uh, in this book, Comeback Churches, which is a book that I am currently reading, the author, Ed Spencer, writes about 300 churches that died a slow death yeah, yeah. because its members stopped making sacrifices for the advancement of God's kingdom, which after all is the mission of the church. Churches are created to be pillars in a community, to minister to the needs of its congregants and surrounding community. Stetson contends if your church can close its doors 
and no one will notice it except the members inside of the church. Yes, then your church is dying a slow death, and you must take notice before it is too late. Uh, you know those churches, don't you? The churches where people don't like it when other people join and take a position. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those churches where if I did not come up with the idea, then it is not a good one. Those churches who don't care about the children in the community who do not attend your church. Those churches who don't care about the drug addicts. Those churches who don't care about the alcoholics. Those churches where their members refuse to tithe but want to give a testimony. Those churches where people sing but they are not saved. Those churches where people shout but won't make a sacrifice to God. And those churches where preachers preach but secretly don't even trust the promises of God. Yeah. Our sacrifices ought to bring us closer to depending and trusting on God. After all, all that we have comes from God and through God. But yet we tend to bypass God when it's time to give. We borrow our offering to God when we come to the offering table. But I contend to you today that we should never ball up our offering to God. You don't ball up gifts, you ball up trash. We shout, we sing, we cry. We pronounce praise God for whom all blessings flow. But yet when it's time to pay our bills, most of us don't even have a tithe line factored into our budget. We pay our mortgage, we pay our rent, we pay our car, and we buy fancy clothes that we cannot even afford. We save for summer vacations. We do all of these things. Yeah. But do you know that your house did not offer a sacrifice for you? Uh, do you know your car did not save you? Your fancy clothes yeah. did not wake you up this morning? Yeah. I know you have a therapeutic mattress, but it didn't wake you up. Yeah. Uh, do you know that vacation, as nice as it seems, did not hang on the cross at the call of Caesar yeah. in the politics of Rome? But yet, the one who died for us. We don't even think about giving a sacrifice of ourselves to them. And we wonder why we have more muff than money. We wonder why our money is funny and our change is strange. We wonder why we can't get ahead. You're trying to save and it seems like every time you put a dollar away a disaster comes. Well, can I submit to you today that the reason why you can't save is because you never calculated God and God's church into your savings. Try tithing, try making a sacrifice, and watch God do something in your life, in your finances. Change your children, change your life, but you must be willing to make a sacrifice. Steps of rights about comeback churches that uh, they must be missional. Missional comes from the same root word as missionary. Missional churches have three characteristics. They must be intentional. They must be incarnational. And they must be indigenous. Churches must be intentional about its mission. Uh, churches must have a missionary objective to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and speak a word to a dying world. A missional churches are churches where people leave feeling better than when they arrive. Oh. Missional churches are not churches where people gossip about one another, ah. talking about, did you see what she had on, what he had on? No. Did you hear that they have having trouble in their marriage? Ah. Their child is acting funny, something's going on. That's not what missional churches do. But missional churches, when they see somebody who is going through something, ah. they go to the person and say, can I pray with you? Yeah. I don't know what you're going through. Yeah. I don't know what you're dealing with. But if you don't get on the phone and call and say, Oh, Pastor Hickson, did you hear or what's going on down there? Did you hear what's going on in his house? I heard him and his wife pray together. I heard his son going the other way. That ain't none of your darn business. You better praise the Lord. You ain't going the other way. You better praise the Lord. 
Satan as a missionary in his community. It eats, breeds, and lives within its culture yes. while sowing seeds of love, kindness, grace, yes. redemption, and good news. Since I've been at St. Stephen's, every now and then somebody will try to bring me some bad news. And I respond with the same thing. I said, well, we'll get through it. It's all right. And I go into my secret closet and I begin to pray with God. I don't get on the phone trying to call this person and that person trying to stir up foolishness. So, because the God that I serve is not a God about foolishness. But my God is a God about seriousness. Oh, bless his name. Some of us, we love to send out text messages. We love to call people and talk about what's going on. But what you need to do is talk to Jesus every now and then. You ought to talk to the Lord every now and then. Instead of sending out a bad text message, send out a scripture that you believe in. A scripture that says the wage of the sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And if you believe in the word of God, then you can stand on his word. So, incarnational churches, means churches that are entrenched in this community, they're not focused only on material buildings, but rather on building better lives. The church does not exist for itself. Uh, so here we are. Missional churches must also be indigenous, are taking root in the soil of the society and reflecting when appropriately their culture. Indigenous churches don't take what Reed Temple is doing in Glendale and try to make a carbon copy in Elk Ridge. Churches have a culture uh, that we don't want to change. Dying churches have ministries that are no longer effective. But because we've been doing it this way since my mama and papa uh, were alive, we continue to do it. Oh, bless his name. We have choirs that no longer inspire us. But we cringe in our seats when they sing. Uh, but because the choir has been faithful for many years, we tend to believe it must continue to exist. But the Bible says you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Our singing becomes a mere formality. We ain't ministering to no one. Ain't nobody getting saved for our singing. Ain't nobody clapping when we sing. We are just singing the same. But I contend to you today that you've got to realize when something has run its course, it may not only apply to a choir, but it might be applied to an office. Some of us have been in offices for too long. But my God, my God, and the church is dying all around us. But yet we are coming and we are trying to hang on the church is on life support. And not only is the church on life support, we're on life support. Because we ain't making no sacrifices. Offering ourselves unto God. Offering our families unto God. Mission of churches must be intentional. Yes. Worship style methods, service times, locations, and other matters are determined by the effectiveness of spreading God's word. Yes. In other words, these 300 dying churches cease to offer the necessary sacrifices that God requires of its members because its members stop offering themselves as sacrifices. Right. Scripture is replete with examples of sacrifices in the Bible. Yeah. Just bear with me, Sister Steve. That ain't preaching two weeks. I feel good this morning. <laughs> oh, bless you, man. But to do good, Hebrews, Hebrews 13 and 16 says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Yes. But many of us will not make sacrifices because in all honesty, sacrifices hurt. If it doesn't hurt, it's not a sacrifice. It, it, it's not a sacrifice. If it doesn't hurt, it is not a sacrifice. It must hurt in order to be a sacrifice. That's why I didn't put on... That
That's why we designed this flyer. It didn't say bring, uh, this is our offering Sunday. Our offering is a response to God. And you just give it God something. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for yeah. giving me hot. Thank you for giving me a car. Giving me gas in my car. Giving food in my refrigerator. Thank you. Thank you for the fried chicken last night. Thank you for the rice and peas. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you put for me. Thank you. Put it in there. I can serve. Thank you. And I can live stream while I'm in bed. I don't have to go to church. Thank you. That's an offering. But a sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Some of us sacrifice 
our bodies on Friday and Saturday nights. And when we come to church, and we won't sacrifice our bodies for the Lord. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. Uh, we sacrifice all kinds of things. But we won't make a sacrifice for the one who created us. The one who made us. The one who knows all about us. And then sacrifices are personal. Abraham took his son Isaac. And then see, he called a meeting with the whole town. And then see, he called a meeting and told everybody that the Lord told me to kill my only son. Because if he had done that, somebody might have killed Abraham. Uh, but the Lord gave Abraham a vision. And the Lord said, Abraham, I want you to take thine only son. I want you to take eyes and get to my right. And I want you to go and I want you to kill him. It wasn't that God was telling him to kill his son. But that God was testing his faith. And said that if you want to trust him, you're going to church every Sunday, Abraham. You're going to Bible study every Wednesday. You're going to choir rehearsal every week. I want to see if you're really trusting him. I want to see you really believe me. I want to see you really stand on my word. So Abraham took his son. He said, Lord, I'm not only about lip service, but I'm going to trust you. Come here, Job. Job said, Go and slay me. Yeah, Bill, I'll trust him. And I don't know about you, but I wish I had about five more in St. Stephen right now. Who said, I'm going to trust you? I don't know where God is. Just 
wild birds, wild birds. So the man said, can I buy you from you? Can I buy you from I don't want you to kill me. Tell me what you want. The little boy said, I want to die for every bird. And the man said, give me birds. Get the little boy a dog for every bird. Yeah. Put the birds up on the high mountain. He opened the gate, the cage door, and said, fly, little birds. I'll pay the price. You can live. Likewise, that's what Jesus did for us. The devil wanted to kill us. But Jesus offered himself as a living sacrifice. Took us on the mountain, opened the gate and said, Fly, you can live. I paid the price. But yet, you won't give your life to Christ. Come right now. Give your life to Christ. He's already paid the price for you. You don't have to live the way you're living anymore. Come right now. Is there one? Come right now. That's it. That's it. Come on. Say choir. If you're not saved, come right now. Give me your hand. If you don't have a church home, come join me right here.
I serve a perfect God. I saw liquor. I smoke reefer. I'm not ashamed of my testimony because I want somebody else who's struggling with those things to realize well, if Graham got through it, I can get through it. There's power in our testimony. But church folk for too long put ourselves up on a pedestal and we look down on others. The Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. sooner if you're still dealing with something. But God has the power to transform yeah. us. Yeah. And it's my prayer that you will allow God to take over your life. God bless you. God keep you. Let's come on. And I want to thank you. Sister McAfee who started uh, the $1,000 campaign. I want to thank those persons who came already uh, for the building of this kingdom. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. The Lord bless you. Middle box is my tithes. And uh, Brother Patrick has a missionary offering, general offering. Kevin will have this sacrificial offering. Kevin, give us something good in here now. <laughs> Thank you.